All right, guys, it is super windy. Hopefully, that dead cat does its job. But I thought I'd make a quick video because I'm actually gonna be taking the 2020 to the job site for one of the first times hooked up to the gooseneck and we're gonna be hauling some weight. So I wanted to let you guys know how it does pulling with that 10 speed transmission. So this is my 22 plus a 10 foot hydraulic dove. This is the PJ gooseneck. But what we're doing today is we're loading up these concrete blocks. We're gonna take these to site because we use these to anchor down our building as we're starting to frame it up. So these are about 4,000 pounds. I think we'll probably bring these four to site. I think we're gonna bring four. Yep. So we're gonna put about 16,000 pounds on this trailer. It's rated for, uh, it's got two 12K axles. I got 17 and a half inch wheels on it, which are, I think the wheels alone are good for about 40,000 pounds, properly inflated. We've also got all of our brackets, Midwest Permacolumn brackets that we use on all of our buildings. These are the dry sets. So we'll actually drill holes and install our Simpson. These are Titan HD 5.8 anchor bolts. And then we've got our bucket of chains. That's heavy. And that is full of chains, about 30, 50 foot chains and binders. That alone probably weighs a few thousand pounds, 2,500 maybe. So what I always try to do is load as much weight on these axles because they can handle it and keep some of the weight off the truck. Now this 2020 is a, holy cow, see that's, that's how windy it is. This one ton truck, I think it's good for hauling about 30,000 pounds total. Don't quote me on that, I have to check. I know that if you get into the dually, it's closer to like 40,000 pounds, uh, but I don't have a dually, I got a single rear wheel and I just don't want a dually. But what I do know is that I do have a class A CDL. So one thing you wanna make sure is don't go out hauling a ton of weight unless you're properly licensed to do so. Uh, I do have that license and I keep that valid specifically for hauling machinery around and I actually help my father-in-law out on the farm when I can hauling grain to and from the field or whatever. So that's why I originally got my CDL. But I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna load all this stuff up and then maybe we'll uh, jump in the truck, haul it to site and just see how the truck performs with all that weight. As soon as you get in your truck and turn it on with your trailer connected, you get your a screen to pop up and it says trailer detected select the profile now i've got i've got a gooseneck setup pj and i've got my bumper pole which is my bmb 20k super single double axle trailer so i'm going to select the pj trailer what's really cool is it saves all these settings recalled my brake gain so it knows how much trailer brake i want brings up your transmission temperature even gives me my average fuel mileage while hauling with this trailer which is very poor you get a checklist to go through i'm probably not going to do any of that maintenance and all this other stuff so you can check your connections make sure you're okay you can start a light test which is pretty cool it goes and flashes all the lights and i don't have any cameras hooked up which would be awesome and that's really about it now over here you've got your dial that you're going to select uh, trailer mode which is clearly on the left and then you're gonna get the little trailer signal down here. That's how you know that you're gonna now gain access to your trailer brake down here, which is pretty nice. And your trailer brakes are gonna turn on and off, which is definitely a handy thing. So let's head to site here. Let's see how she does. Also, I'm not gonna be holding the camera once we get going down the road. I got my buddy, Zach. I don't think it's gonna go over because it's locked on my face, but hey, Zach, say hi. Oh, you shaved, dude, nice job. All right, I figure what we would do is, I'm pretty fortunate, my, my wife's family has a farm operation and they got a scale. So we're gonna run down there and run over the scale just to see how much weight is actually on this trailer. I've never done that with these concrete blocks, so I don't really know how much weight I'm hauling. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it, but I'm kind of giving it a little bit of the gas pedal to see how it shifts and it, it just shifted. You probably didn't even feel it or hear it. It's super smooth. The 10 speed transmission has all sorts of gears. I'm going about 57 miles an hour. I'm gonna set the cruise at that because I don't try to go much faster than 55. What's cool is once you get to speed, 
it does stay in a higher gear until you kind of level off and then it starts down shifting and right now we're running about maybe 12 1300 rpm not getting the best of fuel mileage maybe seven eight miles per gallon man this thing hauls like a dream super comfortable so we'll go to the scale and we'll run across it see how much we weigh All right, so we're here at the scale and I actually have no idea exactly what I'm gonna weigh. I think when I'm empty hauling this trailer, I'm about 16 or 17,000 pounds. So add 16,000 pounds-ish. Uh, I'm guessing I'm probably in that 32 to 35,000 pound range with what I've got. So let's pull on here and take a look. My father-in-law's scale is not big enough for truck and trailer. We'll go ahead and get the weight of the truck first. And then we'll see. All right, so that's the front axle or the truck. We've got about 11.9. Now let's go ahead and pull the rear axle on. So that's how much my truck has in total, which ain't bad because my truck weighs about 8,000 pounds. Now I'm going to get my whole truck off the scale. All right, so 11.9 and 21,560. 21, so I'm going to do simple math 21,560 and just say 12. That's about 30, 33,000 and yeah, almost 34,000 pounds. 34,000 pounds. I've got my Class A CDL, which allows me to um haul more than 26,000 pounds and have a combination so truck trailer combination of more than 26,000 pounds this trailer is rated uh how much was on that how much was on the trailer 20 what 21 21.5 so this is a 26,000 pound rated trailer i'd say we're good to go man we could go over a scale uh, or get pulled over you need to have my seat belt on though so I don't get pulled over from that. But um, so total weight of about 34,000. This truck has no issues. And I think that is well within the GVCW. And in fact, maybe I'll just quick double check that to make sure. I think it's 35,000 pounds. But uh, try to be legal always. And I, you know, do my best to do that and i think i'm i think i'm all good so all right let's get to sight all right what the heck guys the weatherman has said no rain there's nothing on the radar and yet we've got a crummy day for us but if you look ahead of me here where that semi is coming from that is a you know it's a fairly significant hill to come right out of a stop sign to so we're going to go ahead and we're not going to punch it but we're going to go ahead and see if we can get up to speed and we're gonna check out the gearing of the trailer in the tow haul mode. We'll see how this does. And I'll try to count the gears, see where we're shifting at. Two. Three. Now we're getting to the bottom of that hill. Four, we're still picking up speed going up the hill. And I'm not punching it all the way down. Five, now we got a little lull, six. Now we're gonna hit another hill. And I'm at about 57, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my cruise. I think that was about seventh speed. I don't know if there's like some skips that it doesn't hit, but maybe if I keep going speed wise, I'll hit more gears. I don't know how that works. Now I see how that just downshifted and I'm still going up the hill, sitting at 58 miles an hour, about 1900 RPM. And it should downshift again here as I flatten out at the top of the hill. Hopefully. Yep, there's another downshift. We're getting about nine miles of the gallon. We're still going slight incline no issues getting up to speed and uh yeah super quiet super good shift points um 
and we're downshifting again as we go slightly downhill but I think we'll have to upshift or sorry downshift I think it just yep there we go as I go back up a hill to maintain the cruise but it is super smooth so I thought maybe that would be cool and useful to kind of see I don't know if the sounds and the shift points can be really felt from the camera though that's pretty cool it's got the uh, cab camera at the back of the cab and I just realized I I got busy and I didn't hook up I didn't hook up my safety chains guys but I'll be honest if this thing disconnects I know it's a safety thing for other people I want that to be gone I don't want that to be connected to my truck still uh, you see how that does that it's a safety feature we got like an eight second delay and unless you kind of keep pushing buttons that's pretty cool look at that uh, it does not like to stay does not like to stay on your camera I'm sure that's a nice safety feature but another thing I'll show you when we get up to this road what happens when you hit your uh, what happens when you hit your blinker so what's really nice here is when I hit my blinker it gives me the camera down the side of my truck which allows you to really nicely make sure that you're not going to run over something with your trailer especially the longer the trailer the better this is really good for backing in and out of small sites you can see everything very easily and it doesn't let you stay on oh i turned my blinker off of course so all right we're at site here so big thanks to zach for filming while i was driving so we could stay safe here on the youtube make sure you always have a designated film video guy or girl when you're driving don't do it by hand guys it's not safe i've done it i shouldn't do it but we're at site here hopefully that video um maybe helped you guys the 2020 definitely is a smoother um shifting vehicle than my 16 having all those shift points is a good and bad thing because i think it definitely helps especially going up hills or with heavy loads but it's also somewhat annoying because i i just can't find that sweet spot all the time like my 2016 where i know when i hit that 55 56 miles per hour spot man it downshifts and i'm getting 12 maybe 11 12 13 miles per gallon even with a load i just haven't found that with this uh, truck and it is super windy out so that's going to affect my mileage you don't buy a heavy duty truck for mileage but it would sure be nice if these manufacturers, and I know it has a lot to do with the DEF and the diesel exhaust fluid, in case you didn't know what DEF was, emissions and all that tier four garbage. I know it's great for the environment, but it definitely sucks the life out of these, you know, engines and the horsepower and the fuel economy. So uh, very smooth truck, very capable, and I love it for hauling. So that's why I bought it. I wanted something that was going to be even better. Um, and long lasting than my 2016. I think the transmission, the horsepower, all those things are great. I would love to do a test with the Ford and Dodge, but that's pretty hard for me to go out and buy uh, two more trucks. It's bad enough I have two trucks. So if somebody's local to me, they wanna let me play with their brand new 2020 Dodge or Ford, hit me up. We're gonna go ahead and unload all this weight off the trailer. We got the JCB at this site, which is nice. And uh, this is going to be an awesome build. I don't know if it'll be up on the YouTube as a build series. It's a 60 by 120. And as you can tell, we got a full foundation wall to build on. And this has got to be one of the cleanest looking sites that we've had in a long time. We've even got grass planted around the build. Usually we get dirt, mud, or sometimes sand. But this is pretty cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little video about the 2020 GMC Sierra. Uh, as far as hauling is concerned, I'm going to obviously keep using this thing and keep uh, creating content with it that might help somebody make an informed decision. I'm not sold on the fact that anybody with a newer truck needs to get the newest 2020 unless you just want that design. For me, having a 16, it was a, it was a good jump getting that air intake with the... Uh, you know the increase in horsepower and i think the uh the polling capacity or capabilities with that 10 speed it's just a lot more smooth or a lot smoother and i'm really loving it so we're going to catch you guys on the next video make sure you hit that subscribe button 
smash the like button if that's what you like to do, Peter McKinnon style, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.